Hello, I'm Howie Sheriff, and welcome to another show from You Call This Yoga's internet TV talk show about accessible yoga. Here we interview leaders and pioneers in the yoga and wellness field who are advancing the practice of yoga so that it can be accessible for any and all people. We've brought in over 25 guests, and we're starting the second half of 2017. We have an exciting young man named Brian Aubin from Long Island, New York, who has discovered the practice of yoga in his 20s and has utilized this to help his struggles as well as others in the community. We'll be interviewing Brian shortly. We'd like to share our program with you and invite you to engage us, whether it's myself, Brian, or questions about other shows. You can dial in at 919-518-9773 for an audio question. You may Skype in at Computers 2K Voice, Computers 2K Voice, or you can log in on the chat box on the Nissan Communications channel where I believe you're logged on to now. Last week, we had the pleasure of a guest host, my friend Celia Hartnett, as well as the guest Lisa Clark, the developer of Embody Yoga. I hope you enjoyed the pearls as I interpreted them and that you were able to gain some insights about somatic-based yoga. Please feel free to view our on-demand prompt and see all of our two dozen plus shows. Where was I last week? Well, it was rather amazing. I had the opportunity to go to Peru and hike to Machu Picchu despite some significant altitude challenges. We're going to give you a moment of zen as we share what it was like to be at one of the wonders of the world and eventually we'll have a TV show based on that experience. Amnon, would you share the wonder of Machu Picchu with our audience in the world? We were looking from Wanapichu, that iconic mountain that you see from the ruins. We were actually looking down on the ruins and the switchback of the buses going up there. It's a rather incredible place, and I encourage you to learn more or to check in with me, and I could share more about it. That was our guide, Rojo, who was actually a native from the area, sharing his spiritual outplay of his heart. Thank you, Rojo, from redandes.com. Well, coming back to the United States was rather dramatic. That happened in the last 48 hours, and it's been a rather inspiring switch 
to check in with Brian. I met Brian in New York this year at the Accessible Yoga Conference. I have a son named Brian, so I'm rather fond of the name. And also, my son and Brian have had some challenges in their life that seem to overlap. I've been very impressed by Brian's intention, Brian Albin, to engage in wellness practices, including yoga, for his healing and sharing of the benefits of yoga and wellness. We're going to invite Brian on the show and ask him to share a little bit about his history and starting with how he became familiar with yoga. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm just very excited. It's, uh, it's great to be back on the air and engaging in accessible yoga, and thank you for being part of that. Thank you for inviting me to be on the show as a, using as a platform to share about the benefits of yoga for neurosis with autism. Yes, and uh, could you share some of how you first became aware of and then started to practice yoga and eventually sharing how that helped you in your path? Yeah, well, I went to yoga because I wanted to try a holistic route to help with my anxiety and depression. And I first started doing yoga at my aunt's studio and I found peace and it helped decrease my anxiety and depression. And I shortly after I did a yoga teacher training and now I'm um, hooked. Uh, so I um, dedicate my life to helping and also autism, mental health and addiction through yoga, meditation, Reiki, mindfulness. And it was my saving grace in my life because I struggled with mental health and addiction and men and um, I have Asperger's as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a plate full of potential challenges to having to negotiate throughout your life. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about your aunt and her studio? How did, how did that connection happen for you? Yeah, well, my cousin has an organization called Mission B, which brings mindfulness to individuals with depression, anxiety, and suicide, and, um, children and adolescents. And she's the owner and her mother, but they sold the studio. But that was my first studio I went to. Um, and then I really fell in love with the practice. Mm. And my sister brought me to her studio. And how long ago was that? That was in 2013, mm -hmm. like the end of 2013, and I started seriously practicing in, in 2014. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, mm -hmm. And you had mentioned uh, several conditions that you've been negotiating. Uh, how long have you been aware of some of these challenges in your life? Yeah, well, I was in special education throughout my schooling. And when I was younger, they thought I had mitochondrial disease and that was ruled out. And I had a metabolic disorder and episodes of cyclic vomit syndrome and migraines a lot and GI problems. And, and I was bullied intensely. So I used substances and alcohol to self-medicate. And I used to engage in self-injurious behavior as well. And I never mentioned anything to anybody. So I, um, that's why I was um, hurting myself and I didn't have a support system. And now yoga helps me and it gives me the biggest joy, um, most passion, greatest joy helping other people. And that's my purpose. And, in life. Mm -hmm. So it sounds as if childhood has been a really complex struggle. Yeah, definitely. But I'm grateful for everything that happened to me because it made me the person I am today. And 
it made me emotionally stronger and mentally stronger and spiritually. But and what was the setting like when you were, let's say, in elementary and middle school? Were you in Long, living in Long Island then too? Yeah, I've been here my whole life. And did you wind up going to any private settings or were you in the public school system? Yeah, I was in public school. I was in resource room. I had an aide and special ed. I had an IEP. Mm -hmm. so and I went to BOCES mm -hmm. as well. Um, the 11th and 12th grade, I went to BOCES for audio production because I love music. And uh, after high school, I did record engineer as well, but I much rather perform rather than behind the scenes recording process. Mm -hmm. Now, BOCE sounds familiar. Could you, could you say what that a an acronym stands for? B-O-C-E-S? Um, no, I don't know it. Okay. It's, it sounds like it's a, but it's a, a program or a system or an organization. Is that what it yeah. is? Yeah, it's for, people that want to do alternative jobs, like different trades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wonderful. And is that uh, an entity that is available regionally, just in Long Island or New York? Or how did you happen to hear about it? I heard about it through my school, but I can't give you the answer. I don't know if it's um, outside of New York State. Mm -hmm. Cause, yeah, I've heard of that before, and I grew up near where you are. And my wife went to school in upstate New York, but I, I've heard of it, but I don't remember what it is. Viewers and listeners, if you have any awareness of what BOCES, B-O-C-E-S, stands for in terms of an organization for helping those with developmental or physiological or metabolic challenges, feel free to check in with us because our lines are open at 919-518-9773. We have Brian Aubin, who has dedicated his life, and he's got a long way to go, in sharing yoga for mental health and developmental challenges. Uh, Brian has prepared some pearls of wisdom for us because he's been practicing yoga for several years, and there are several channels of which he is negotiating his practice. He's developed his own pattern and teaching style, and we're going to share with you his first pearl of wisdom about some breathing practices. Hello, in this video I'd like to share with you a pranayama breathing exercise that I use to help me when I'm anxious and feeling stressed. It's called Durga Swasan, three-part breath. It utilizes the full lung capacity of the individual. It brings awareness to the breath, it calms the mind. It's a great tool for self-regulation and stress management. So begin to bring your right hand on your heart center, other hand rests on your belly. Inhale, breathe in through your nose here, closing the eyes. The belly rises here, ribs and chest, and exhale, chest, ribs, belly, fall back down. Inhale, belly rises, ribs and chest. And exhale, chest, ribs, belly, fall back down. Inhale, belly rises, ribs and chest. And exhale, falls back down like a wave crashing on the shoreline at the beach. Thank you, Brian. Uh, how has living on Long Island and your reference to the beach come to be part of your healing and sharing? Do you have classes there? Uh, how do you like to use the beach for wellness? Well, I love swimming in the ocean and I used to sail. I was on the sailing team when I was younger and I enjoy sailing as well. My grandfather has a boat and we go sailing um, on the bay uh, a lot in the summertime. I'm a Pisces too, so 
I guess that has to do with it. Um, and I love the water and um, I mainly go at night when there's the sunset, when there's not a lot of people, because I don't like crowds. Mm-hmm. I get anxious in crowds. I can... But uh, yeah, to, uh, I'd like to teach class maybe sometimes uh, in the future at the beach. Mm-hmm. Which beach do you like to go to? Uh, my favorite one was in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my sister was teaching art therapy there in a refugee camp in Thailand, so I visited her. Are there any beaches on Long Island that you have a favorite? Yeah, Robert Moses is good. Mm-hmm. Fire. Yeah. Wow. Well, New Yorkers, any interest in practicing yoga with Brian? Robert Moses is a very large beach, so you might want to check in with Brian to see how you might engage him. Brian, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, my website is brianaubinyoga.com and it shows my email address on there and my number as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you had mentioned anxiety and depression and you had mentioned about the belly breathing would you describe that as a more uplifting or grounding kind of practice? Yeah, three part breath is more grounding. It helps with my anxiety when I'm feeling anxious and I used to have panic attacks in the past. So breathing is uh, super beneficial for me on discovering the breathing exercises in yoga. Mm-hmm. And for those that may have a challenge, even in getting to a count of three, how would you address breathing in general for someone that has anxiety that disrupts their ability to count? Do you have some alternatives that you have in your bag of tricks and experiences? Yeah, people don't have to count. They can just focus the awareness on the breath, like each inhalation, exhalation. Mm-hmm. And do you have any particular items or objects or focus elements to help people who are a little stuck? Yeah, well, I light a candle when I meditate a lot, and you can focus your awareness on the candle. and soften in your eyes Mm -hmm. and i prefer to close um the door so nobody interrupts me and um turn off the lights as well it's a more conducive environment interesting and i teach with the lights off as well because individuals with autism have sensory issues hypersensitive Mm -hmm. to noise touch texture smell and other senses as well Mm. Well, that's pretty fascinating. Uh, When did you discover or how did you discover the elements of light and less light in your practice? In my practice? Well, I learned about it from my mentor, friend and teacher, Sharon Manor. She trained me in the yoga for autism. She has an organization called Ashram for Autism, which brings yoga, meditation, stress management to the autism community and their parents. And she teaches the parents stress management tools, meditation, mindfulness, and the other guy in that program, Dr. Mark Rosenbaum, he teaches the social emotional techniques. Mm -hmm. He's a psychologist and the part two of that training, I learned um, how to teach parents aspects of that and the premise of the train was to better take care of yourself so you can better take care of your children create a healthy home environment right because i can suspect that parents are still learning just about the nuances of whether it be asperger's other elements of mental illness or emotional challenges whether it be anxiety depression 
and other components not mentioned. Uh, it's rather uh, an, a revolution for a parent to try to appreciate where their child is. How, how was your home in growing up and the negotiations that you had to come to with family and your family with you? Yeah, well, my parents, um, we have a difficult relationship, but it's better now. Mm -hmm. well, I can appreciate that. It's, it's, it's a big void or abyss because a child can be somewhere else that a parent may not fully understand. I know that I'm still learning about different conditions that my family on several levels is negotiated and is negotiating and even retrospectively with my own sibling who had his own emotional issues and how my parents were rocked by his situation. So I can appreciate where your family has had its bumps too. Yeah, I was diagnosed late at 17. Yes. What else? And, and that could be a revelation, but it's a many a year and many a day till you're 17 years old and what you are trying to figure out for yourself also. Were there some other constructive habits that you were able to engage to help you manage some of these conditions besides yoga? Yeah, well, I go to therapy. Um, it's very beneficial for me to talk to someone. I see a social worker and I see a, a dialectic behavioral psychologist in group therapy. And I feel that's a great tool to have and a support system. Um, I also do other modalities such as Reiki, essential oils, and meditation, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I love to hike in nature as well and play music too. Mm -hmm. And when did you start practicing music? Uh, when I was 16, 15, 16 around. So it's a very valuable form of expression and can appreciate that. Uh, what kind of music do you like to share? Yeah, I play acoustic guitar and sing. I play the Tibetan singing bowls as well. And a meditative drum is called the Rabas. And I want to learn how to play harmonium too and the gong. And, yeah. so, so you're going to have a, a massive toolkit of uh, sharing. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah. One of my goals is to record a meditation CD, a guided meditation CD. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're going to uh, prepare for another pearl uh, in the sense of in the sense of sharing some of your mantra as you like to develop that. We'll get to that eventually, but could you share a little bit of the background of how you use mantras for your comfort? Yeah, well, mantra helps me because I oftentimes, a major part of my life, had very dark thoughts about hurting myself and negative thoughts, and I had um, attempts of suicide, and I used to um, cut myself and over exercise and like skip meals to the switch. But um, and mantra helps me because I changed a negative to a positive thought instead, and I don't feed into my depression. Like um, if I notice it happen and I change it to a positive thought. Hmm. And I suspect this has taken a lot of practice. It's, it's not just a light switch where you can say, oh, I have one thought and I can change it to another. Uh, just in my observing of my thoughts and other folks around me. So it sounds like you have a team that has really been facilitating 
some of your growth and healing. Could you yeah, go that, into a little more about that team again of men and women? Yeah, definitely. Well, my main inspirations and support are my two sisters, my sister Brittany and Amy. They were in Free the Children when they are in high school, which is an organization that gets children out of sweatshop labor. And Brittany sold her own clothes when she was in high school, and she went to college for journalism. And then she worked for an organization called Street Sense, which helps the homeless. And then she did HIV and AIDS work in Africa. And then she worked for an organization called Global Citizen Project. And she talked about poverty in America and lived on a dollar a day for a week. And she's like, um, one of my, she's my main inspiration in my life and my other sister as well. My other sister I mentioned before, she was doing art therapy in Thailand over she camp. And then um, my other inspirations are my therapist and Sharon Manor, which I mentioned to you before, the founder of Ashrams for Autism. My sponsor really helps me from Alcoholics Anonymous and my friends, family, and yoga teachers that train me, such as Jennifer Reese, um, Nikki Myers, and Down Your Way. And, um, yeah, all my teachers are great, full, and inspiration for me. Like, they help me a lot. Excellent. That is quite an array of support, and it shows that it does take a team to help heal. Uh, viewers and listeners, if you have any questions about Brian's history, and he will be sharing his vision, too, in just a little bit, then we welcome you to engage us by Skype, phone, or chat. We're going to shift to Brian's second pearl in regards to mantra. Hello. In this video, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite mantras that I use. It's a great tool to help with if you're ever feeling negative about yourself or in a bad frame of mind. Mantra means to free from the mind. And the mantra that I will be sharing with you today is called Loka Samasta Suki Nu Bhagavantu. It means may all beings ever be happy and free. So begin to close your eyes now. Take a nice deep inhalation through your nose. And exhale, breathe out. Loka samasta sukinu bhavantu. Loka samasta sukinu bhavantu. Loka samasta sukinu bhavantu. May all beings ever be happy and free. And may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and freedom for all. May the light of truth overcome all darkness. Hello again. We're just dealing with a few sunspots. If you've felt there was a little vibration beyond the norm. Brian, would you share your mantra again, and could you describe the translation of that so that we might resonate with that a little further? Yeah, the mantra that I presented was my favorite one. It's Loka Samasta Sukinu Bhavantu. It means, may all beings ever be happy and free. Hmm. And who taught you that? Who taught me? Um, my first yoga trainer, I learned it. Wonderful. And uh, are there other mantras that you feel are applicable for other settings? Yeah, I like the Ganesha mantra. It's to remove of obstacles, and he's the god of intellect and wisdom and new beginnings. Um, mm -hmm. It's Om Gam Ganapate Namaha. And, and that's if mm -hmm. um, you're ever having any struggles in your life, uh, you can chant that. 
and how would that translate? If you're having obstacles or struggles and having a rough time, it may help you if you chant that and to mm-hmm. have a better outlook. Mm-hmm. So over the years, it sounds as if you've gone through a significant transformation, especially the last, let's say, six, where you've become more aware of the things, the demons that you're negotiating and some healing pathways to help address that. Uh, When did you become aware of AA and how does that work with your yoga? Yeah, well, I first started going to A in 2016. Mm. I got sober January 1st of 2015. I was using from age 16 to 22. Alcohol and various drugs. I did anything that can get me out of my skin because I wasn't comfortable with myself. So I was self-medicating, feeling a void. And... If I didn't discover yoga, I would be um, not here right now um, from mental health or addiction. So I'm very grateful that I get to use my experiences and struggles to help other people. And in 2015, I was still hurt myself. And I went to the hospital um, for self-harm and a suicide attempt. And then that's when I um, went to AA after in 2016 and got a sponsor. I only went to 1A meeting in 2015. Mm. So even feeling at the edge, uh, it still takes an incredible amount of effort to make the commitment to heal. Yeah, I was I was already certified in a yoga training in 2014, and then I was doing a 200-hour Hatha yoga training, so I was still not mentally well. But now I'm in the best place in that in my life. Well, yes, just because we have yoga training doesn't necessarily mean that all that we're carrying with us is going to uh, shift. It's it's yeah. it's a tool. And yeah, how it, um, you always have to apply it to your life. So you mentioned your sister, you mentioned your aunt and cousin. How about your age peers and other folks in in some of the social development programs? Have they been open to and experiencing yoga? Yeah, I teach my friends yoga, meditation, Reiki, and um, they enjoy it as well. And I turn some up, turn them on to yoga as well. Mm-hmm. Some of them. How do you feel? I sense you're in your mid twenties ish. How do you sense uh, your age peers in general are responding to you and your transformation with yoga? Yeah, well, um, they definitely notice that it helps me. And it's instrumental in my life. Mm-hmm. Any pushback? Um, I don't know. Good. Well, that's that's fascinating. I can appreciate it. I do my sadhana every morning. Yoga, meditation, pranayama. I notice if I don't do it in the morning, I'm more anxious and more negative about myself. And mm. I have a more productive day. And when I do it in the morning. Mm-hmm. Viewers, listeners, practitioners, newbies, uh, the curious, Brian has made tremendous gains in his life by incorporating the very elements of yoga as well as taking it out into the world to share with others, healing for him as well as others. We encourage your engagement because I suspect a lot of us have threads of similarity with Brian, whether it be with people we know or ourselves, who we're also still trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a full and better father, uh, and I've only had about 32 years of practice. 
So it's still a growing experience of trying to understand what other people may be thinking and experiencing. So we welcome your input. We're going to diverge a little bit towards the realm of Raleigh, where we're based, because our mission is to help the physically challenged and underserved improve their life with yoga. We have some fundraising and fun events coming up, one of them at one of our partners, Sola Coffee. Let's learn a little bit more about what's coming up on August 11th to help our mission in the Raleigh and Durham area. You can believe there will be yoga at Sola. Back patio donation class to kick off this wonderful edition. Support you call this yoga's mission to help the physically challenged and underserved improve their life with yoga and enjoy this wonderful space in Sola's backyard. Freshly washed by a nice thunderstorm see how it may just wrap around provide lots of shade or sun when we practice on august 11th from 7 to 8 p.m at solas lead mine and sawmill roads in raleigh to support the nonprofit you call this yoga come on inside afterwards there'll be live music too What an amazing video, one take, and I didn't even fall over the tables or splash the water. It should be pretty dry then, and just come out and have a wonderful experience at Sola Coffee on Lead Mine and Sawmill Roads in Raleigh. We'll have music inside, and your donations will support our teachers who are serving throughout Raleigh and Durham areas. Thanks. Back to Brian. Brian, when you were at the Accessible Yoga Conference in New York this past spring, and we met then, what was some of your thoughts and impressions about that experience, and how might you share that with our audience? Yeah, I loved the conference. I actually spoke there with my mentor, Sharon. We did a yoga workshop about the benefits of yoga for those with autism. And I went to the other teachers' presentations and I think it's an amazing place and community for people to um, share ideas. And um, it's very um, uplifting to see so many people and wonderful people um, given the gifts of yoga and meditation to underserved communities. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people should do that as well. What do you think uh, the greatest misconception about autism is, or misconceptions uh, in your travels now? Misconceptions. Um, a lot of people might think it's like stereotypical, like um, Rain Man, or, um, or the complete opposite. And, um, and individuals with autism are just as capable as doing anything just as much as anybody else. Mm -hmm. They just have a different brain, oper brain um, operating system. Yes, I can appreciate that. Uh, the cues and the nuances and degrees of focus can vary. And I guess that's why they call it a spectrum where there's a range of process. Yeah, yeah. There's a quote saying, if you met somebody with autism, you met someone with autism because it's a spectrum. Everyone mm -hmm. varies. And, and lately, and I mean lately in the last 10 or 15 years, there seems to be a grand awakening and awareness or maybe even propensity of autism being diagnosed or noticed in, in our community. How, how has that impacted you? Oh, more Andrew's diagnosed with autism? Yes. Do you feel that there's a greater uh, 
intention to understand you or has it made people more confused? Um, do you yeah, feel there is. I think the statistic is one in 50 children are diagnosed with autism today. And there's definitely more resources and therapy and support for diagnosis with autism now than ever. And it's, there wasn't much when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, um, it's amazing to see so much support and that they don't have to um, go through the same stuff as people who are diagnosed to in, um, in the past. And even just having a support group and a social skills group is, is an incredible element that is not necessarily available for all. How did you connect with uh, these groups, whether it be with Sharon and the physician that was doing the social groups? How did you find them? Uh, Sharon actually uh, looked up yoga for autism. I Googled it and saw her website and contacted her and I was drawn to her and um, she's an amazing person. I um, love her style. And, She's an integral yoga teacher, Swami Sitchitananda. Mm -hmm. And um, and her, her main goal is to create an ashram for adults with autism, which I'll be um, working there and help leading the trainings, and, which I'm very grateful for. And um, the support group that I go to, I found out about my, I looked them up myself as well. So it sounds as if you've been a very self-driven individual to find solutions, whether they be the positive or the negative, but it sounds like you're very driven. Is that a fair description? Yeah, I'm driven, but I wasn't always in the past. So I was in, and um, I volunteer a lot too. I volunteer for an organization called Calipra Karma which brings meditation, yoga, stress management to underserved communities with so mental health and physical challenges. And I teach at the Bellevue Adolescent Psychiatric, psych, Psychiatric Unit for them. And that's, um, I'm very grateful that I can do that. Um, it's very rewarding to go in there and teach them to help them cope with their mental health. Mm -hmm. So it sounds as if uh, there are resources out there, but it takes an effort to find them for an individual to gain some help. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I volunteer at a recovery center too, and part of an advocacy group in uh, New York, the Self-Advocacy Association of State. So if an individual who's listening or watching to our show uh, needed a little bit of help or encouragement, could they find you on your website and then communicate with you to some degree for support? Or yeah, to... definitely. Yeah, I'm happy to help. That's my biggest passion. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others, Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. Well, you've shared some breathing process. You've introduced a mantra. And viewers and listeners, we're going to take a little video trip over here to join Brian in a meditation that may be accessible for you now, or you can come back when we have the show recorded in about an hour and a half and engage another pearl of wisdom and practice from Brian. Hello. In this video, I'd like to share with you meditation. Meditation is an act of quieting the mind, drawing the mind inward and away from outside disturbances. Meditation improves sleep, decreases anxiety and stress, bringing the mind into the parasympathetic nervous system the relaxation response, as well with a wide range of other great benefits. Meditation 
is best done before sunrise or at sunset. And if you have eaten, wait at least an hour and a half to two hours before you begin your meditation practice. It is best to meditate every day regularly for a short amount of time rather than once in a while for longer amounts of time. So you're consistent with your meditation practice and inform people that you will be meditating so they don't interrupt your session. You can put a sign on your door and I prefer to turn off the lights and I like lighting the candle. And you can sit in a nice comfortable seated posture like I am now, or you can have a blanket under your seat or a meditation cushion to be more comfortable. And also you can sit in a chair, whichever is comfortable for you. And begin to close your eyes here Observing your breath, take a nice deep breath in through your nose. And exhale, breathe out. And if thoughts arise, have them flow. Don't attach to them. Just focus on your breathing. Thank you, Brian. Viewers and listeners, if you couldn't capture that right away, feel free to come back on our archives. You can look at the on-demand prompt on the left part of the screen for your Nissan's communication. Scroll down to You Call This Yoga, and then you can find our 25-plus shows, including Brian, in about an hour and a half. Brian was able to share how he settles into meditation, the setting, the mantra, and the positioning. Brian, how else do you like to foster a sense of comfort in your environment? Regarding meditation? Or anything. What are your tools for soothing or energizing yourself? Besides breath, what else do you like to do? I like an essential oil to help me fall asleep, like vetiver or lavender. Mm -hmm. Peppermint to help me wake up because it's more stimulating essential oil. And frankincense or balance or stress away for anxiety or depression. Mm. And those are some of the essential oils I use. Interesting. That's really cool. And how do you use the oils? Are you consuming them or rubbing them on or what works yeah, for you? I apply them to my temples, forehead, wrists, uh, feet. And sometimes I put them in my water tea. I use herbal tea as well to help me fall asleep too because I had a history of staying awake and insomnia. So like Valerian root is good. And you should avoid like blue light activity, be, like turn the TV off or any electronics like three hours before you go to sleep. And yeah, I try to get like at least seven hours of sleep each night. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've, you've really made an effort to create a very supportive structure and community for yourself. It's very impressive. Uh, I was Thank all you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's very inspiring, too, to see how dedicated you are. Uh, in my travels, it's, it's rare and very special to meet someone as motivated as you are. And I can also appreciate, for my own physical challenge, being very inspired to help others, as, as I've had to negotiate loss of career and it's sometimes loss of mobility from paralysis. So when I think of what drives me, uh, it's some of my own edge and struggles that I've been able to move from or with 
along the way. And that's why I'm so excited to have you here sharing your path uh, for another generation and for us to be inspired. So I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be um, anywhere I'm at today if it wasn't for my support system and um, for the tools and wisdom of yoga and philosophy. Well, one thing I found, I was just in Peru and I was in the high elevation and despite all my attempts to avoid altitude sickness and dehydration, I still had both. And I was reading your blog and you had a comment there about most people tend to be dehydrated. How did you uh, come across this thought and, and any tips that you have for people beyond their normal activities for hydration? Yeah, well, I try to drink water like at least seven or eight glasses a day. And, um, I do drink coffee, but I try not to drink a lot, like maybe one cup or two a day. And I try not to drink six hours um, before I go sleep with caffeine, because then I'll keep you up at night. Um, I eat organic food and um, nothing processed. And I'm a vegan as well, which uh, helps with my, um, helps me because I, in the past I had stomach issues. And how long did it take for you to change your diet over time? Uh, gradually, like when I got into yoga, I gradually changed it. I'm, I'm gluten free as well. I feel like that affects my stomach. And um, yeah, my only vice now is coffee. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty minimal because you're managing that. Yeah. And and for viewers and listeners or folks that may have any question, how did you come to learn about the resources available in the community? Because it sounds like you did some searching, but were there other agencies that were able to be utilized and how can people find them in your opinion? Such as autism organizations? Right, or, or whatever, whatever you found. Uh, you did some work, but did any folks come to you? How did they, how did this all happen? Well, my therapist mentioned, like she directed me in places to go to and friends and family as well. And not all of it was research on my own, but a lot of it was, and, but the rest was from family and friends. Mm -hmm. And how, how is your vision for the next year plus? What, what other trainings and intentions do you have? Because it sounds like you have a wonderful intention of helping to heal. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, I consider myself a lifelong student. I love to learn and educate myself so I can become a better teacher for my students and my students are my biggest teachers because they teach me um, when I teach them. And I plan on doing, um, I'm doing the uh, children's yoga training next month at Integral Yoga. And then I'm doing um, the mindfulness self-compassion training. That's where Kristen Knapp, she's a professor at Austin, Texas uh, in psychology. And, her son has autism as well, and I'm excited about doing that. It's a, a long process, but I'm going to start it this year. And then um, I like to do the restored yoga trends next year and the International Association of Yoga Therapists and a yin yoga training and possibly go to my Ayurveda counseling at Ayurveda Institute. So I have a lot of um, educational plans. And how are you able to swing these opportunities? How can you get funding or are there suggestions for other individuals to get support for these kind of trainings? Yeah, well, some places offer scholarships 
and for myself, um, I'm a minimalist, so all my money goes to education and travel. So I rather buy experiences and educate myself rather than materialistic objects. And some um, states offer funding as well. And how has New York been for you? They helped. Um, they helped me in ways, yeah. So, viewers and listeners, teachers and yogis, practitioners, the curious, yoga can be helpful in subtle and significant ways, but it does take a team. And we encourage you to reach out to us at You Call This Yoga or Brian at Brian Albin Yoga and Wellness. Brian, what is the website spelling for your site? Yeah, it's my name and uh, B R I A N A U B I N Yoga dot com. Wonderful. Brian Albin yoga please check in with him and us if you have any questions we'd love to facilitate your path in accessible yoga brian has been a member of integral yoga in his training he's looking to grow with them i've come to appreciate the integral yoga institute over the last couple years as i've delved into organizational sharing uh, the accessible yoga conferences that he and I have met at and will continue to attend to are wonderful also. We encourage you to check out accessibleyoga.org to learn more about that organization. And what we'll do now is transfer you back to Machu Picchu to have a little bit of moment of Zen while I give some more background information. Here's Barbara meditating the morning of last Monday as we hiked up to Wanapichu, that iconic cliff there. It was a wonderful experience to experience the history of cultures who are very in touch with the earth. Our organization, You Call This Yoga, welcomes Cheryl Fenner Brown next week, who will be sharing yoga for cancer survivors and their support structures. So we welcome Cheryl and thank Brian for sharing his journey in managing some issues with yoga for anxiety, depression, alcohol, and Asperger's syndrome. Brian, thank you for being willing to share some things that are potentially uncomfortable and painful. We hope that this has been inspiring for our viewers and listeners and also comforting for you, as I understand this is your first grand public interview. Any other yeah. thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, if anybody has any questions about further information regarding autism, support and organizations, I'm happy to send them information that can help them with resources and support groups, etc. Wonderful. It's, it's a treasure to have you in our relationships, and we hope that people can be inspired and utilize what you have to share. It's, it's an honor to be connected with you. Likewise. Thank you. Viewers and listeners, looking forward to seeing you next week with Cheryl Fenner Brown. And then after that, Suzanne Cologne, spiritual surfer. So wax up those yoga mats and boards. We look forward to sharing more accessible yoga with you soon. Namaste, Brian, Amnon, and all out there. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. 
If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net. <laughs>